to Atlanta Live. I am your host, Nancy J. Lewis, and we have a wonderful show for you this evening. We have some guests that are going to help you learn about financial literacy. I think in this era we're in, people need to know how to handle their money. How does God want you to handle your money? We're going to talk about uh, a family that's doing some great things. So we know that you're not watching this show by accident. It is important for you to be here. There's a reason that you're tuning in tonight. So I know you're going to be blessed because the word's going to go forth because God is in the midst of all that we're doing. He loves you so very much. He wants the very best for you. I'm honored to be here this evening. I don't count it lightly to, to be a host here. So I praise God for the privilege in the platform. So tonight you're going to be blessed with encouraging words dialer that will bless your spirit so tell a friend tell a neighbor don't change the dial tell your friends they can watch you on this show on youtube facebook you want to let people know have a facebook watch party or a youtube watch party so people can hear the word because the word will go forward with boldness and power so we praise god what he's doing with atlanta live we thank you for tuning in because this is a show where they have some amazing guests sharing testimonies about how good god is so we just thank you for tuning in stay tuned don't change we got music guests are going to be amazing you're going to be blessed Bless, bless. So we're going to have our first music guest, So Key Music, singing Free to Be Me. I want you to just celebrate what God has done for you and what he's still doing for you.
Free to be me. Yes, you got to be free to be who you are. So praise God for that song. And now we have our first guest. We have Kim Schooler. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Nancy. It's great to be here. Thank you. And we had some good dialogue before the show. You know, the green room always has a lot of good dialogue. But tell people who you are. You're a financial expert. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm a financial professional and I'm an advocate for women in particular and financial literacy. So I've actually been a lawyer for more than 30 years, almost 35 years, and worked as an attorney in the financial services industry mm -hmm. for much of that time. I ended up serving as president of one of the largest broker dealers in the United States. And when I looked around the room, I was the only female in the room. Mm. And so it really spoke to me about how women need a voice. Mm -hmm. Women really need to feel like they've got access to financial services and access to financial education. So when I left the corporate side, I started my own law firm here in Atlanta, Jade Law Offices, and my own financial business, reaching out to men and women, but women in particular. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the things we know, this October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and we were yes. talking about how m so many women who are caught in that cycle, and even men, because men are also sometimes domestic violence uh, in that cycle as well, but how do you help them because sometimes they feel trapped? So what do you do? What are some things you've done in the past to kind of help that, those individuals? So as we talked about, one in four women will experience domestic violence in her life. And 99% of those women will also be victims of financial abuse. And as you said, men also can be victims mm -hmm. of domestic violence and financial abuse. But there are a lot of things that women and men can do to prevent getting in a situation like that or maybe getting out of a situation like that if they if they don't find out until you know it's you know they're deep in it especially if they have children mm. so among the things that we recommend for victims is first that they start talking about the issue they start talking with their trusted friends and family members uh, maybe you know people they know at their church so that they can find out what support and resources are out there to help them maybe in their relationship or to get out of their relationship or to help their children. Next, we want men and women to learn how money works. Mm -hmm. It's so important. <laughs> we talked, we about, talked that. about this. You know, it's not taught in schools. Right now, only 21 out of 50 states uh, require uh, one course in personal finance taught at the high school level. Really? 21 out of 50? 21 out of 50 states. Now, is Georgia one of those states? Unfortunately, it's not. Wow. I know. So it's not, it, it's not our fault right. that we don't know how money works, but it is our responsibility to get that information. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are a lot of financial institutions yes. and financial professionals out there that yes. want you to think it's rocket science, but it's really not. It comes down to some very basic financial concepts. And then we recommend that victims in these um, abusive relationships mm -hmm. to get out, to start putting a personal financial safety plan in place, mm. stashing the cash, setting up a secret bank account, setting up a secret credit card, maybe with a P.O. box address or the address of a trusted friend. Um, and, you know, just put money away as you can, tap into those local and church resources, community resources that are out there to help. Because I think the interesting thing is that, we, as we talked about, uh, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, money management was certainly not taught. No, it wasn't. I mean, you, you watch however you were raised, whatever was the, how your parents handled money was how you learned to handle money. Right. And so if your parents were spenders, you became a spender. If your parents were those who saved, sometimes you would be one who would be a saver. But I just remember as we were talking when I was in college, you know, uh, going to college, it was a wonderful thing to be at college and be going on scholarship. But, you know, you get your first credit card, you're like, yes, I got my credit card. <laughs> I'm excited. I know. So, you know, you go and use a $300 limit. Oh, that's really good when you're in college. Yeah. Oh, I can really do oh. some damage. Right. So you go spend. 
then you got to pay for it. Right. When it comes back, it's like, so you learn the hard way sometimes about how not to do things. But now there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of resources, to your point, a lot of tools to help people learn how to handle money better. Right. And more importantly, how to be a good steward of it, because God wants us to be a good steward of what he gives us and then how to begin the process of changing sometimes a generational cycle of living paycheck to paycheck. Well, that's exactly right. You know, we do learn about money from a young age from our parents mm -hmm. or whoever raised us. And if they were spenders or savers, or if they lived paycheck to paycheck, that's what we learned. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that's what we then start teaching our own children. So that mindset about money is passed down generation to generation. It's by, you know, empowering people with financial knowledge, they can break that cycle, help their family and future generations to come. So how do you begin the process of teaching women and sometimes men some of the basic concepts of money management? So let's say some basic concepts, some fundamentals of money management. What are some things you teach them? So we teach basically three financial concepts mm -hmm. and seven money milestones. Okay. The three financial concepts that we focus on are about understanding about compound interest mm -hmm. and how that actually works. And then for young people in particular, understanding the high cost of waiting. If, you know, young people put off, you know, for their retirement or their future financial goals, but if they start setting money aside early, mm -hmm. even if it's a small amount, and they continue to do that on a regular basis, they build that habit, by the time they are ready to reach their financial goal or their retirement or whatever it is, they put aside enough money to take care of that. The third financial concept we teach is the only math that I'll talk to people about. Because, you know, when I talk about math, a lot like, of times. Oh my like, goodness, people are no. like, okay, math, please, please. Especially women. <laughs> but the only math I'll ask people to understand is a simple thing called the rule of 72. Mm -hmm. Now, the rule of 72 is you take the number 72, it's always 72, mm -hmm. you divide it by your interest rate, and that will tell you the number of years it will take you to double your money. Mm -hmm. So if you're, say, you have your money in the bank and it's earning 1%, most banks aren't paying 1%. No, they're not. But say it's earning 1%. Right. 72 divided by 1 is 72. Yes, it is. So Every your day. money sitting in the bank is going to double in 72 years. I mean, you'll be retired by the time your money doubles. So if you just put that interest rate in, um, for example, say you're um, earning 6%. Mm -hmm. 72 divided by 6 is 12. Mm -hmm. So every 12 years, your money is going to double. Mm -hmm. So that's the only math you need to know. Now, look at your bank account and what interest rate you're right. earning. The average is 0.09%. And then look at what the average credit card rate is. And that's 17%. Yes. So you're doubling your money, 72 divided by 0.09% is 800. Your money will double every, every 800 years. But the bank mm. that is so happy to give you that credit oh, card. Oh, here, take it, especially please. Especially when you're in college. Yes. 72 divided by 17 is 4.6. So the bank's money is doubling every 4.6 years. And then sometimes the interest rate is even higher. Exactly. And if you exactly. don't pay it off each month, they really are having a wonderful time with you. Well, and even if you pay late, <laughs> one of the, you know, when I talk to college students, I tell them paying late is the quickest way to ruin your credit score. Mm -hmm. So get on auto pay or um, put alarms into your cell phone, whatever it takes to make sure you never make another late payment. Well, you, you think about how their late payment, sometimes the late payment, you may have a bill that's only $25. That's all you owe. Right. And you forget to pay it or you're late paying it, and your charge for the late fee might be $35. Yeah. Literally. It is, and then oftentimes. If you talk about in the banking business where if you have uh, overdraft, you don't have overdraft protection for a check that may bounce. Right. You're, I mean, I once had a conversation with a banker just so you know, that's just really... What, what you treat, how you treat consumers is just wrong. <laughs> it's just wrong because it doesn't take that much for you to charge that kind of money. 
but it's all about you know how they're making their money work for them I agree so it's so important if you understand these things then you know what you're getting at the bank and maybe you can shop around and find a bank that's not going to nickel and dime you over fees that is going to be more customer friendly but you, the key thing is asking the questions and being educated and informed. Yes. And so people have to take that step to be informed and educated and do their due diligence to say, okay, I know I, maybe I don't handle money the way I should. Maybe I don't know enough about money management, but I can find someone who can help me who has an expertise in that, someone like you or other people out there to say, I need some basic fundamentals of how I can handle my money more effectively because what I'm doing now is not working. People right. need to be seeking that out. Women need to be seeking that out. Yes. You know, we recommend people educate themselves because there are a lot of great tools out there online. There are some great books that will help you. But also look for a financial professional or look for a financial coach mm -hmm. who's going to give you tips, who's, you know, going to help you make adjustments, help you set your financial goal and do the things that you need to do to stay on track for that goal. It's really finding people who help you because you can be an expert of everything. No. And when God gives you money, he wants you to be a good steward of it. And sometimes, you know, I, I have some people that I know who, when they get money, they're just, as soon as they get it, it's like, it's spent. I'm like, right. what, did, what did you spend it on? Well, I bought this. Did you need it? Did you need it at this point in time? But it's like, I had it, so I wanted to do that. And then when you really need it, you don't have the money. Right. So it's really getting people to change their mindset about being a good steward because if God can trust you with a little, he can give you more. But if he can't trust you with a little he gives you, why, why are you going to get more? So it's really stepping back to say, I want to become a better steward of the money that God gives me so because he, he'll trust me with more if I'm a good steward of what I have already. Exactly. You know, doing that research and then really thinking about it, is this something I want or is this something I need? And if it's just something you want, and every now and then, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But really focused on what your needs are, what your family needs are, mm -hmm. and what your family's financial goals are. Yeah, because sometimes when you spend, people like to eat out. And yeah. eat, I mean, even the quick service or fast food restaurants now are as expensive as the sit-down ones. Yes. And so you like, you drive through, you're like, did I just drive through and pay $15? Right. And I just drove through. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even. I, I've had, I like check the receipt. <laughs> what did I buy? Yeah. It's right. True because sometimes you think you bought something, and I've been to a restaurant once, well, a drive through once, but I thought I paid for something, and then they charged me more, and I had to call back because they made a mistake. Right. That's why you check your receipts. Again, that's a good steward. Yeah. It's like when you purchase something to make sure that what you or what you're paying for is what you paid. Because sometimes they do make mistakes. They do. They're human. But you got to check. You got to be on top of it. So it's really just becoming mindful and says, I want to be a good steward. I want to know how to manage my money more effectively. I want to know how to make it grow so that I can live a comfortable life so I'm not living paycheck to paycheck. I'm not having to, they say, rob Peter to pay Paul. We, we've been, some of us, I've been, I grew up, sometimes we're, there was not a lot of money there, so you, know, you gotta figure out how to make it work. Right. And my mother did a wonderful job, and so she taught us good money management, but there were a lot of things that she didn't know that she couldn't teach us. Right. So it's important as we think about now, they have people like you out here, and you can't be an expert sometimes at everything, so sometimes you have to hire people or work with someone, like you said, a financial coach, right. to help you navigate those areas that you're not as proficient in. Right, and ask questions. Um, do interview people for the position to help you with your finances, just like you would for a doctor or a dentist or lawyer, whomever else, whatever professional you're gonna look to to help you. Interview them, ask your questions, and make sure that they're on the same page with you. Make sure they even understand finances because well, a lot yeah. of people are putting names to, attach their names to certain things, and they are expert in this. How long have you been doing it? Well, six months. And that doesn't right. mean that you're not an expert because you've done it six months. I'm not saying that. But the point is, if you've been doing it six months, you might not know as much as I know. Right. So it's important that we really, as you said, we basically investigate and make sure the people we're hiring to help us are equipped and qualified to do that. So when we come back, we're, this has been good information. When we come back, we're going to talk about those seven, I think you said the seven? Seven money milestones. Seven money milestones right. that will help you. Mm, that's going to be good, seven money milestones. Yes. So that's interesting. So people, again, need to know the importance. If you're watching tonight, you're watching not by accident. You probably need to look at your finances and say, oh, let me see, I need, to, I need help. 
Well, here's somebody who can help you to learn with your, to work your finances, but if not, there's other people out there that can help you because it's so important to become a good steward of what God is entrusting you with. So you're not watching it by accident. So take notes when we come back. We're going to learn about the seven money milestones. Money milestones to help you with your money, with your, with your money. So we're going to go to the music again. So key music singing King Jesus Party. You gotta put your hands together. We're gonna be celebrating Jesus. Come on. Party. So we're back now with Kim Schooler to talk more about money management, financial acumen. So talk about these seven milestones. So the seven money milestones are the seven components of every solid financial plan. So the first step, the first milestone is financial education. 
Okay. That's just starting to educate yourself and continuing that financial education journey for the rest of your life. Always be learning. Mm -hmm. The second piece is putting proper protection in place to take care of you and your family in case anything were to happen to you or to happen to your income or your savings. The next piece is debt management. Mm -hmm. Debt management, you know, eliminating that debt, um, uh, bringing down your expenses, mm -hmm. doing those things to get smarter about your debt. Next is an emergency fund. Putting three to six money, six months mm -hmm. of uh, money away, six months of income or expenses set aside for emergencies only. You know, not for a retreat, but or something special or vacation, but for emergencies. So six months, because I thought at one point- Three to six three, months. Three to six months, okay. Three to six okay. months of income or expenses. And you know, a lot of people who did have an emergency fund in the pandemic mm -hmm. really had to tap into that mm -hmm. uh, because they were underemployed or laid right. off or whatever. So an emergency fund is really important. And I'll tell you, Nancy, it is one of the most important things that people can do who are living paycheck to paycheck. Because if you're living paycheck to paycheck and you have an emergency, mm -hmm. what do you do? You put it on a credit card. Right. And so you add another credit card bill, another minimum payment that is going to keep you strapped mm -hmm. to that, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. So creating that emergency fund is going to free you up over time from actually living paycheck to paycheck. So quick question. So people who are living paycheck to paycheck who really are, you know, their income is limited, how do they begin the process of starting an emergency fund because they may say I'm living paycheck to paycheck you know I'm basically have enough just to take care of this how do they begin the process of putting something away what do you suggest they do well it, it is about putting a little bit of money aside each week or each month and if you look at what your expenses are mm -hmm. whether it's eating out because it's so expensive now uh, whether it's you know lattes mm -hmm. that's kind of my weakness <laughs> um, I'll admit it um, but you uh, go through and you start eliminating some things that are wants mm -hmm. rather than needs. Mm -hmm. You will, and maybe you don't have a lot of those extra things in your life. And again, every now and then it's okay. But you really need to put money aside every week or every month and do it on a regular basis. Another thing to look at are subscription mm -hmm. services. Okay. You know, if you've got Hulu and Netflix and HBO Max and uh, Prime and, and all of these Ooh. services, it, uh, they seem redundant to me. Mm -hmm. So look at your bank statement, look at your credit card statement and see what you're not using, what's redundant, mm -hmm. what is really not necessary anymore. And you may say, well, gosh, that's like $5 a month. <laughs> but add that up yes. over a year's period, that and then two years and then three years, mm -hmm. then you're really creating a, a, a savings fund there, an emergency fund there. So look for those opportunities. Because you say, like, even if you have like Hulu, Netflix, all those, they do add up. It's like you know, five dollars or ten dollars. And for the most part, I at one point had Hulu, Netflix. Prime. I see. You know what? I, yeah. I was. You know. You, again, to your point, you have all these subscriptions, and you start looking at stuff. Okay, what do I need to get rid of? Right. And so I went through and got rid of Hulu because it's like I don't watch it. Right. And if I said if I got rid of Netflix, I'm like kind of grandfathered in, so I have like the really low price. They said oh, you go good back for and you. you come back. They say you're gonna be paying two times that. So I'm like, I'll just stay with that. Yes. Because if I if I decide I want to come back six months from now, I'm gonna pay twice as much what I'm paying right now. I'm right. Like, no. And I do watch it from time to time. But again, I have basic I have cut out some subscriptions that I wasn't using. Because the point you look at those things, people who have to have their lattes or their Starbucks or whatever it is they like to have right. every morning. If that adds up, if you do that two or three days a week, that adds up. People when they were Truly going to the workplace, up. people who were going out to eat a lot, are supposed to take them to lunch. Right. So there are ways to look at how we can streamline some things if you want to do it. Yes. Well, and it's all about getting educated. Not mm -hmm. only educated about finances in general, but educated about your finances. Right. Where are you spending your money? So the next milestone mm -hmm. is called increasing cash flow. And that is exactly that, understanding 
what money is coming into your household and what money is going out of your mm -hmm. household and what's left over. And then looking at opportunities to increase the money coming in. You know, if you have a job, you have one stream of income. Mm -hmm. Are there other streams of income that you can open up for you and your family? Maybe it's a side gig. Maybe it's mm -hmm. starting your own business. Mm -hmm. um, and looking at what you're spending your money on, are there things that you can consolidate or get rid of, right. things that you don't really need? You know, can you increase the deductible on your car insurance mm -hmm. to bring your car insurance premiums down? Right. Simple things like that. Then the sixth milestone is about building wealth. And this is the fun milestone because this is where you get to dream about the future. It's like, oh, I can hack my bank account. I got all these zeros behind my. Right, right. <laughs> so it's, you know, is it retirement? Is it that dream vacation? Is it, you know, your child's wedding or their college education? What is it that you dream about for the future for you and your family? And that's where the build wealth milestone fits. Mm -hmm. And then the last milestone is protecting your wealth. Mm -hmm. And that has to do with putting an estate plan in place. Mm -hmm. You know, having a will, a financial power of attorney, um, having a health care directive mm -hmm. and a HIPAA release. And under certain circumstances, especially if you have special needs children, you need to look at putting a trust in place. If you've got small children, you want to make sure you've got an estate plan in place so you identify for the probate court who you want to take care of your children if something were to happen to you. So why do, because I know there's a lot of people who don't have those things in place. Even I know when uh, the pandemic started, they, there were some stats out that I don't remember what they were, but they talked about how many people didn't even have three months of income or didn't have like a thousand dollars saved or something like that. There was some alarming figure that exactly. I saw out there that was, the people were like just, people were surprised, but I'm like, really, why should people be surprised? Sometimes because of how we spend money. Right. So it, you know, the pandemic was a real wake-up call for a lot of people. In a lot of ways. In a lot of ways um, that, you know, they, maybe they thought, you know, they were balancing everything, mm -hmm. even though they were living paycheck to paycheck, but something like a pandemic happens and um, maybe your job wasn't affected, but your kids are home. Right. And you've got to find childcare yes. or you've got to take off from work to take care of your children. So it was a juggling act because so many women left the workplace during the pandemic. They called it a she session. Yes, yes. So many women left because they just couldn't juggle uh, parenting, you know, being a wife, different things, you know, homeschooling, all those things. So they left the workplace. So the question is, how's that going to impact going forward? That's going to impact some things going forward. Well, there, I think there are, there's good news and bad news. Mm -hmm. Many women who did leave the traditional workforce mm -hmm. during um, the pandemic made the decision to permanently leave the workforce. Yes, they did. And f for some women who are still in the workforce, they are going to be behind when it comes to raises and promotions right. because they did have to take time off from work to take care of their kids. For women who decided not to go back, they're either in, you know, enjoying being at home and taking care of their family, or they're starting their own yes, business. Yes. They're, you know, it's buying and selling online these days, yes. creating a beautiful website is easier than ever. Yes. So a lot of women are, and men, are looking at, well, maybe I will start a business, something I've always wanted to yeah. do. Now's the time. Now's the time. Now is, you know, the world is kind of in a transition. So this is the time. So tell people how they can reach you. I want to make sure they know how to reach you. Give them your information now. Okay. So my email address is kim.schooler. That's K-I-M dot S-C-O-U-L-L-E-R at wealthwave, W-E-A-L-T-H-W-A-V-E dot com. So kim.schooler at wealthwave.com. Okay, so that's how they can reach you. So take the next minute, because uh, we're getting ready to wrap up this segment, take the next minute and just encourage someone out there about money management. So what I, I would just kind of summarize a lot of the things that we've talked about, that it's not your fault, it's not taught in school. Unfortunately, it's kind of up to us to take responsibility for our own financial education. There are great resources out there. It's not rocket science. Just spend the time 
getting to understand what basic financial concepts are and what you need for your financial plan. And then get in the habit of putting a little bit of money away, maybe once a week, once a month, whatever it is, just get in that habit. Okay. Wow. So some simple things people can do and begin those simple steps. Sometimes the key to just uh, making things happen is taking that first step. Right. Taking the first step to say, you know, I didn't have f f four lattes this week. I had only two. <laughs> you know? Right. You know? So, again, little steps because sometimes, you know, some people are hooked on things. It's like this is like habitual. So, right. all of a sudden, instead of doing four, you do two. That's, okay, I'm going to put this money in my little stash fund here. So, it's beginning small, but just begin. So, just want to thank you, Kim, for being here. Kim Schooler, thank you so much for joining us this, e this, this evening. Talk about money management, financial acumen, because it's so important. So, again... People got, you got some great tips this morning, this, this evening, because I'm thinking, these are great tips. And so I would encourage you, as you listen tonight, you got some ideas around some things you can do differently, some things you need to maybe curb. Look at those subscriptions. That's where a lot of stuff takes place. You have subscriptions to everything, magazines, all kinds of stuff. Sometimes, do you need all those things? Look at some areas where you can make some cutbacks and begin to take that money once you stop that subscription. Put that in your savings plan. So we thank you again, Kim, for being with us. So thank you so much for tuning in for this segment. I know you were blessed. You got some money management tips that will help you. So now we're going to go back to the music set with So Key Music singing, I Put On For The Kingdom.
looking at the light go blind. I to the studio and I have my second guest here who's been singing but now she's taking the guest seat over there we have Kiana Harris yes. welcome thank you <laughs> always blessed hey, I like that thank you thank you Definitely. so you it. we got a chance to talk in the green room as well and so you have an amazing story you're doing some great things I mean certainly you came from so key music you came over here Correct. So talk to us about some of the things that you're doing Ooh, some of the things that I'm doing um, I'm, I'm doing a lot of ministering around town as far as music. Um, I'm in the process of continuing to write. Uh, I do write stage plays, I do write screen plays, um, I write poetry. Um, but in the, in the meantime, right now, I'm focused on my music more so. Mm -hmm. um, and then next year, I'll look into getting into the film industry again and into my stage acting. Wow, so poet, screenwriter, playwriter. Correct. Uh, and then songwriter. Songwriter. I mean, all that. So, and I mean, so were those your children with you? Yes. Okay, so you bring, it's a family affair. It's a family affair, that's right. So the interesting thing is we talked about it. Tell people, because you are the mother of eight children. Yes, I am. Yes, people I like, am. And I know when you say that people probably, their eyes get big. Oh, yeah, I'm used to it, and I love it now. When people go, oh, you know, I, that's the reaction I look for now. Like, wow. Yes. So how do you juggle that? I mean, eight, and tell people the, the ages of your children, because I think people who watch tonight who maybe have two or three are like, they're thinking they're really being challenged. You have eight. <laughs> right, that's right. So anybody who has four or less, I, I don't want to hear you complain. You can do it. Um, but my, the ages of all of them, my oldest is 22. Mm -hmm. Then we jump all the way down to 13, and then we got 11, 9. Nine, eight, a four-year-old, and two three-year-olds. They're twins. <laughs> so you have, uh, you have a one, I know that has to be just a wonderful mix in oh, yeah. home in terms of just the joy that happens when they're all together. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. I hear people who always say, you know, you got a football team, you got a basketball team. And I said, that's right. The key word is team. Yes. Because when we're home, we all have to work together collectively as a team, you know, just like how in basketball they pass the ball to one another to make sure you get that goal. That's what we do too. We pass the, the, pass the torch sometimes to make sure we make that goal. So how, with all the things you're doing though, how do you juggle all that and how do you, you have a lot of balls. How do you manage those balls and, and make sure that you are doing what you need to do in all those areas? Because you have a lot going on. Oh yeah, you, it's you absolutely a lot, a lot. It's absolutely a lot. And I cannot deny that everything starts with God. Amen. Everything starts with God. I mean, because it was at a point where I didn't think I could do this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and just in all honesty, it does get tough at times, but I always remember my source. Amen. And when I go back to my prayer time and, and have those moments with God, he always reminds me with you, with me, excuse me, God says with me, you can do all things. Yes. And so I'm always reminded of that. And even through my kids, sometimes they'll come to me and they're like, mom, you got this. And just to hear my kids feed wow. back to me what I give to them, that, that is a strength. That's encouragement to tell you, you got this, Mom, you That's can do right. this. That's like, right. And then you realize, <laughs> yeah, I can't do this because my daddy is with me. My father's with That's me. That's right. I can do this because with him, all things are possible. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So also you have a ministry as well that... Um, be Healed Ministries. That's right, that's right. So tell us about Be Healed Ministries. Um, that's with my husband and I. Um, and we're, we're a brand new, brand spanking new ministry. Um, God has placed it on our hearts mm -hmm. uh, to do so because of, uh, apparently the anointing has always been there. Amen. Um, but my, my husband and I, when we first got started, you know, he's like, I believe the Lord is asking us to step out on faith because we were doing it in our home anyway. 
you know, when the pandemic came, mm -hmm. especially, um, we couldn't go out to church. So we started having church right in our own living room. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of us ministering to our children and to ourselves, you know, it was like God gave my husband um, the, the, the green light and said, hey, I need you to share mm -hmm. what you're sharing with your family now. Now that you have started your ministry, because ministry starts at home, right. now that you're ministering at home, I need you to minister to others as well so that they can get that same freedom Man. that you have. You know, and some people look at us and, and they're like really shocked that we're able to make it because we have such a large family. But with the, the with the numbers that we have, you know, there's power and strength in numbers. Yes. And Amen. because there's a lot of us, when one is down, the other one's praying. When the other one's, you know, mm. so we we have our kids without even forcing them to do any of these things by them watching us right. is naturally in them. So they, you know, the example teaches. Correct. So people would rather see a sermon than hear one. Right. So they're watching. They're modeling what they see modeled out in front of them. Correct. So they're seeing faith because when they say you can do it, they're saying you know it's not on you. It's on God. That's right. Because if you can figure it out, tell me, if you, if you have it figured out, God's not in it. That's right. You can, if you can do it on your own, it's like, it's what exactly. you can do. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Don't expect to walk in the park. <laughs> Don't expect crystal stairs. You know, um, but it is about the bottom line, which is, what do you believe? You know, where does your faith lie? You know, because sometimes we have, you know, we rely on ourselves so much that we Ooh. forget to include the Father who has all the answers. So when we try to get the answers from ourselves, we start to figure, we start to see our cup run dry. And I tell you, you can't pour from an empty cup. And some people exactly. found out during the pandemic they were pouring from an empty cup. They That's were pouring right. from fumes. That's right. And so if you're not being filled with, with the Spirit of God on a, reg on a daily basis, mm -hmm. because the battles are fierce, right. the war is on, and you really have to be prayed up every day to know that we're in a battle. Every day, every day. And I notice that every day by me having children, mm -hmm. because it seems like that's where the attack starts, is with our children. Mm -hmm. And so we have to have our moments where we're like, hey, oh, fast time. <laughs> you know, it's time to fast, time to do this, time to do that, time to pray, because we know our children you know, as, as Whitney always said, our children are our future, mm -hmm. you know, Amen. and that's very true. That's very important, you know, and so our children have moments where they're like, you know, mommy, you know, what something's, you know, and we have to be aware and, and use discernment to understand when they're going through. Right. Because all of them have different personalities, so we have to understand those personalities to know when they need our help or when they need, you know. What they need. You, it's not one size fits all. It's not cookie Correct. cutter. If you have eight children, you have eight different personalities. That's right. And so you can't just have a cookie cutter, okay, this is what I'm going to give all of them. Right. You give them what they need. Right, exactly. And you, give, you love them unconditionally, mm -hmm. but you give them one needs more, one needs a little bit less of something else, and you give them what they need in terms of in that moment. Correct. But they know that you're there to support them, and I think that's the beautiful part. And then they're working with you. Mm -hmm in the music industry that you're doing. They're working with you in the ministry. So I know I was reading about, you know, the ministry you had and how initially you all kind of like, and she said, you kind of, yeah, we kind of, kind of like, like, you said, well, now God, I, I don't think so. It's like, can you come back at a later time? It's like, and then God came back. Right. right. That's right. You know, and it, it was tough for us and we did run in the beginning when we were first called. Why'd you run? You know, in all honesty, out of fear, um, because it's almost like you feel like, when you're leading a ministry that there's this expectation of being perfect. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we knew that we were some people that, that had some issues along the way, you know. Is everybody so, at, yeah. <laughs> right. and, and welcome to the club. Right. And so I'm like, well, Lord, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to keep it together. We're trying to do this. We're trying to make sure we, you know, and God's like, I'm, I'm not focused on all of that. And I need you not to be focused on all that. Mm -hmm. I need you to be focused on the fact that there's somebody out there waiting to hear you. There's somebody out there waiting to hear me through you, you know? And so we had to put aside how we felt. We had to put aside the fear because we, we know that God says there's no fear. Right. You know, he gives us, you know, sound mind. And so um, we had to be obedient over the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And by us obeying, we've seen so many things that we were able to do through the ministry. We've been able to bless people with cars. Really? We've been able to, yes, ma'am. We have Cars, <laughs> like C-A-R-S. Yes, yes. And it was surprising to us because there were times when we were scrambling and scraping, you know, and I was listening to her speak about um, 
you know, wisdom with your finances. Right. And during those times when we were first having babies, I mean, our finances, you know, were, were scary. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> and so we were kind of <laughs> like, you know, so that's what was surprising to us because that didn't come through tithes and offering to be able to give to people. Right. You know, it came through God blessing us. And that's why I did wear this always blessed because I feel like we are always blessed. Amen. You know, and being able to do that for others so, so early in the ministry, I can only imagine what God will do once we As you start to, to grow the ministry. Exactly. <clears throat> but to give away cars, to be able to bless people with a car. In terms of people seeing, you know, God in action in terms of being provided with food and shelter Correct. or clothing, whatever it is. Those are things when people see that in action, that sticks with many people. That sometimes right. will draw them into the kingdom. That's right. That's right. And that's all we want to do is be able to give people love. You know, there's been so many people just saying, hey, I don't want to go back to church. I've been hurting the church. And, you know, our purpose for ministry is... As you see, my hair is different. Mm -hmm. I have in a nose ring that's, you know, and I want people that look like me to not be afraid mm -hmm. to go to God because of how they feel like their image is being portrayed by man. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hey, don't worry about how you look. Don't worry about what you, you know, what you've been through. Mm -hmm. You know, allow your past to be the past. That's not what we're focused on. We call it Be Healed Ministry because we want you to be healed Amen. spiritually and mentally, you know, not be healed in your, in your garment, you know. Now you have to be, it's, God looks at the heart. Correct. Man looks on the outside, but God looks at the heart. So sometimes people look good. Mm -hmm. They dress the part, mm -hmm. but they're broken vessels. Exactly. And so exactly. you may fool the people, but you never fool God. That's right. That's right. So I tell people, it's, it's important to make sure that you get healed from the inside out. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what it's all about for us. You know, God gives everybody their positions. You know, some ministries may uh, be anointed in this area. Mm -hmm. Some ministries anointed in this area. But our... our uh, anointing of our ministry is to help people feel loved, welcomed, and those who've been rejected before. You know, we're here with open arms to give you what God gave us, which is love regardless of what we've done and what we've been through. Amen. So. And people can feel love because I tell people love is, you know, that's something you, you can display it. You can show it. Right. You that's can right. say it. Yeah, you can say I love you, but okay, do you ever call someone? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, you ever, do you ever say, okay, do you need anything? Mm -hmm. That love is an action word. That's right. You, you have to do something at some point to say, you know, I love you, but let me just let me just shower you with some blessings or just a word in season, whatever it is. It's showing it's showing people how much you love them in terms of some action. Right. Absolutely. I mean, there's something even as simple as if you're walking into the store and a smile. It's like nowadays, it's hard to even see a smile. You know, you got to wear a mask, number one. You know, and sometimes people are so um, closed up because of after pandemic, a lot of people have been closed in and, you know, shut in to where they don't know how to express themselves. So sometimes it's been a times where I walk into the store and I'm like, hi, how are you? You know, and the person's like, you know, it's almost like a right. shock <laughs> that like, you're what? smiling what? and really, you know, asking, you know, how are you, you know? Um, so sometimes even a, a smile can make someone feel like, you know, it, it, they break something yes, that they were carrying on the way to that store. We even you know? say, you know, God loves you. That's right. You know. And sometimes you can see that you can see people as you watch them sometimes, just sometimes how they behave, you can tell that they're unhappy. Right. Right. And it's, it's important. People have to have, you just have to keep your joy. And your mm -hmm. joy is not based on what you're going through. Right. That's right. I tell people, joy is Jesus on you. You have to have the joy no matter what's going on. Just right. not based on your circumstances. That's right. I totally agree. I agree 100%. You know, I mean, I've, I've heard a saying where, um, you know, um, and not even just a saying, we, we are con in control of our peace, in all honesty. I feel like we're in control of our peace. I well, mean, because really? it's, it's what we choose to focus on. You know, and that's one thing where I've been growing in that area is just allowing God to redirect my focus. Amen. Um, to keep me from focusing on the what I don't have, you know, and be, being focused on what I do have, you know, because that, that increases my joy because I'm not focused on those things that are minor that I can eventually have. Amen. You know, and, and learn to wait, to be still Amen. and know that he is God. Amen. So take the next minute and a half and just encourage someone who's watching tonight who, you know, is saying, well, you know, I'm struggling, I'm going through. Just take the next minute and a half and just encourage someone who's watching. Yep. Um, and my encouragement to you would be, uh, what is it, Philippians 4 and 6, be anxious for nothing, mm. but through your prayers, your supplication, your thanksgiving. Allow your request to be known unto God so that he can give you peace that surpasses all understanding. So whatever it is that you may be going through, just know that he is God and he has your back. So anytime you have a need or a concern or a worry, lay those burdens at his feet. God got you. 
as you said, lay them, but don't pick them back up again. That's right. Don't pick them back up. You know, don't we, pick them back up. cash your care. You know, you can cash your cash care on the Lord. <laughs> then sometimes you walk away, if you get the prayer, you pick it right back up and you go back out with it. So when you cast it, you want to leave it there. That's right. And you don't want to pick it back up. That's you right. Say, Lord, you got this. That's right. So tell people how they can reach you. Um, well, it's concerning music. Everything is so key music. S-O-Q-I music. That's uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, um, all the social media platforms. Um, my music is on all digital platforms as well. Spotify, iHeartRadio. Um, I can't think of all the other ones. Uh, but our ministry is under my name, my, uh, my birth name, Kiana Harris, Q-I-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, last name Harris, H-A-R-R-I-S. We're on on Sundays at 1030 a.m. Okay, that was a that was a mouthful. Yes. You, got, you got it down. It's like you got that pitch down. It's like you just flow through it. So again, so people can reach you through those different avenues. Correct. So it's important. So what is in terms of you write your music? You said you write all your music. Yes. So do your children help you write any of the music? Not as of yet, but they will. Oh. And they have started writing their own. So they will have their songs out pretty soon, sooner than later. That, that has to be great to, <laughs> when you actually have a, it's like a family affair where you have, you know, the children are part of it and they're, they're seeing what God is doing. That's right. That's right. They're it's, seeing where it started mm -hmm. and where God is taking it. That's right. And that's incredible. When you can see that as a child, when you see that happening in your family, your, your parents' life, that gives you the, the hope to say, hey, mm -hmm. truly, I know with God all things are possible because what we can see, what we can, we can be what we can see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, they're, they're, they're literally my little seeds that are sprouting <laughs> up out of the ground, you know, to, to eventually be a blessing to somebody else. So. Amen. But they're my little, I tell, again, you, whatever you see, that's what you be. That's right. So if you want people to be people who are kind, they've been shown kindness. Mm -hmm. That's right. So if you've never been shown kindness, sometimes you don't know how to treat people with kindness. So we have to make sure we're modeling and basically being like, like Christ. That's right. We, we need to make sure we're modeling and doing things the way Christ would want us to do, that people can see Jesus in us. That's right. Because that's what we want them to see. We want them to see the light of Christ in us. So, you know, as you're always blessed. That's right. Uh, so that's you right. smile. It's like, you know, you came in, you just smile. It's like you're happy. So <laughs> praise God, Kiana Harris. Thank, thank you. you so much for joining us this evening for the music thank and for you. being a guest here on the show, talking to me. And we thank, thank God for you tuning in tonight. I know you've been blessed again. We talked about money management. We talked about finances. We talked about here's a mother of eight, music writer, songwriter, uh, uh, was a screenwriter, all the things she's wore, poet. I mean, she's wearing about 500 hats. I mean, not really, but she's wearing a lot of hats. But she's using the team effect, bringing the family in. So it's important that we have to make sure that we're doing all these things. Love your family. Love, love God. And we'll see you here tomorrow night again at 7 o'clock. We love you so much. Thank you for watching Atlanta Live Channel 57. Good night.